Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done it yet, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to keep things going. So today I have uh, another example of how you can use programming within your Quarto document. So I previously did a video where I embedded R code inside of a Quarto document, but this video specifically is about Python and how you can do the same thing. It's almost exactly the same. So let's go ahead and take a look. In the document I'm showing on screen now, uh, we see our familiar header, and we're again using code folding like I did in that R video. I changed the uh, code summary to just say code in all caps, and one other change is that I'm leaving the title out. Instead, I'm going to use a header for the title of the document page. It's a little bit lower on the page, but I'm just showing you that you can, in fact, delete the title if you prefer. So uh, below the header, we have our level one header, which is Python programming in a Quarto document. I want to point out the HTML code for a line break that I have inserted in the middle of that statement. So when this renders, you'll get a line break in this longer than usual title so it doesn't wrap um, on its own. So we're in fact controlling where it breaks. And below that, we do the same thing with this level two header. And the example I'm showing today is a salary distribution for interior designers in the United States. So I grab these data online. I'll put a link uh, below so you can see where that comes from. And here we have a code chunk indicated by three back ticks and then the curly brackets. And then inside of that, we simply type Python. Now, I do already have Python installed on my machine. And when I ran this for the first time, I did get a prompt that our studio needed to install the reticulate package, which is uh, it's a package that R uses uh, to help work with Python. So um, when that was done, this all ran just fine. So one other thing inside of this code chunk is we see some command here for fig cap. When we have our output, we're going to get a chart and below that chart or figure uh, we're going to see this caption. So we're defining the caption for the figure here inside of the code chunk. Below that, we import some libraries. In this case, uh, I need the pandas library for some data manipulation, specifically to help me read in a comma separated values or CSV file that contains the, uh, the information. And then we also import the matplotlib uh, library and we're going to use that for the data visualization. Now, I have written here as a comment the location of the original data source. It's not something I had to download. I just typed in a few values because there weren't very many. So I created my own CSV file for this, but the original location is here at datausa.io. Uh, so uh, there's a few comments here about what I'm doing, but essentially, again, we're using pandas to read in the CSV file and we're going to store that in a data frame. So commonly that's abbreviated as DF, so that's our data frame. And then PD is how we represent pandas. And then the command here is to read CSV with an underscore in between. And then we're going to read this file, so that's the command for that. Notice that I do have my data stored inside of a data subfolder of my directory, just to keep it clean. So if you have your data file stored somewhere else, just pay attention to that. Below that, we define the X and the Y elements from that data frame so that our chart knows which is which. And so the salary and the percentage of um, the, the data are defined here. So we're just simply looking in column, well, the first column and the second column. So um, below that, we have the plot itself. So once we have an idea of the salary brackets and the percentages associated with them, we need to plot those. So here we have PLT, which is going to be our, our chart. And then we have some options for that. So I set the width of it. I tell it that we want a bar chart with a certain color. I chose one that looked a little bit designery, if that's a word. And then uh, we can specify the title, the X label, the Y label, change the font size for those. And then we can also adjust the ticks for the X axis because when I first ran this, they were all jumbled and on top of each other. So to clean it up a little bit, we can reduce the font size, 
rotate those so they don't lie right on top of each other. And then we can set the horizontal alignment to the right, and then the rotation mode is anchor. So they, they rotate nicely from the right side down about 45 degrees. And then further, I remove the border around the whole plot to clean it up a little bit further. And then finally, the command here is to show the plot, and then we get our final render. So let's take a look at that and see what we get. So to see our output, I ran the code, and I'm dragging that over here so we can take a look. First things first, just notice that our title is broken where we wanted it, so it's not wrapped on its own. If we left it alone, I think it would break here and just say Python programming in a quarto new line document. So that wouldn't look very good. So we break it here so it's nice and neat. And we do the same thing. So we see salary distribution of interior designers in the United States. Uh, below that, we have our code folded already for us. And so if we want to look at that, we can open that up and check it out. Otherwise, it's a nice clean report. And we see wage distribution of interior designers in the United States. We have a clear plot that shows the average salary brackets and then the share as a percentage in each one of those brackets. The color looks okay. And below that, we see our caption, a bar chart made with Python. Obviously, you can make that say whatever you want and make it a little bit better. But that's essentially how you want to do this. And uh, you can run Python in your Quarto document just like R. All right, thanks and have a great day. Thank you.